how to understand joint actions in exercises. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in today's video, I want to explain about joint actions, but how they relate to exercises. And this is gonna help you if you're level two or level three, and especially if you're starting to learn training systems whereby you need to know what's happening at the joints, you need to know what muscles are activating inside each exercise in order to plan appropriately but also it will help you with your clients so that you can actually get results and that you're training the area of the body that you wanted to train. So this is where your anatomy and physiology blends with your exercise library knowledge and you bring it all together to be able to actually really understand now exactly what's happening in the body. And this is gonna have a knock-on effect in terms of the results you get with your client. So first of all, the first thing you need to know is you're gonna take the exercise that you want to analyze and you need to first of all find out which phase is the concentric phase and which phase is the eccentric phase. Concentric is whereby the load is going up towards the clouds. Now that load could be your body weight, it could be a dumbbell, it could be the pulley system or the weight stack on a resistance machine, but it's whereby the load is going against gravity up towards the cloud. And I like to remember this as concentric, starts with a C, and so does the word clouds. So you're going concentric phase up towards the clouds. It's the lifting phase. Now we need to work that one out because that's the one that we're going to analyze the joint actions are. We're actually going to ignore the eccentric phase altogether. That's just something that allows us to get back to the start for this purpose. So we're going to only look at the joint actions that happen in the concentric phase of that movement. So let's take a squat, for example. It's eccentric phase when you go from standing down towards that lowering phase, that's your eccentric. Ignore that one. From this lowest point of your squat, standing up, what happens at each of the joints? So it's not all the joints moving, and it's not just one joint moving. Let's first of all find out how many joints are moving. We've got movement that happens at the hip, movement that happens at the knee, and movement that happens at the ankle. Any other movement isn't necessarily part of the exercise that we're aiming for, whether you're swinging your arms, whether you're moving the spine slightly. What we're actually looking for are those three joints, hips, knees, and ankles. Now, let's start off with the hip. On the way up from a squat, we're getting hip extension. So it goes from this flexed position, and then as we stand up, we extend the hips. And that therefore is shortening the glute muscle. So we go from an extended glute, which is nice and lengthened at the bottom, and then it shortens on the way up. Then we also have the knee. Now the knee is going from flexion, and then as we stand up, it goes to extension. So again, we've got hip extension and we've got knee extension. Now both of these, so first of all, the, we've got the glutes working, which we've explored already. The knee extension is then working the quadriceps. And then they're the main two joints that are moving. But we also have a small amount of movement happening at the ankle. So just do a squat now and imagine that happening. As you're in that lowest phase, you've actually got quite a small angle in your ankle. So you can kind of see that you've kind of got this small angle happening whereby your shin bone is pointing forwards and your foot is flat on the floor. Then as we stand up, that starts to straighten, which is actually plantar flexion at the ankle. So have a think about those three joint actions inside a squat. Hip extension, knee extension, little bit of plantar flexion. So we've got this movement through and we've got these three joints occurring. Now I can use that information if I want to create a training system like a compound, tra a compound superset, for example, whereby I wanna use the same joint actions Again, so I wanna have hip extension, knee extension, and a bit of plantar flexion. That could be the same as a lunge, for example, or it could be the same as a leg press. It's the same joint actions in the concentric phase, and that helps me with my planning. Or if I'm looking to do a post-exhaust, I go, well, how do I now make sure that I've got an isolation exercise that just works hip extension? Well, I might put in a hip thrust. So you can now start to plan according to joint actions. If I was taking something simple like a bicep curl, I take that bicep curl, concentric phase is going to be the lifting phase. So in doing so, that's that action when the dumbbell is going up towards the clouds. So what the only joint action that happens is flexion of the elbow. So if I wanted to pair that with an agonist antagonist superset that works the opposing muscle, I need the opposing joint action so that I get elbow extension. That gives me a tricep extension exercise and I compare the two together. 
So can you see that understanding anatomy and physiology, understanding joint actions becomes the way of understanding how to plan for your clients? Even down to creating a whole body approach, you might turn around and go, right, I've got something that allows for adduction of the shoulder. Now I want something that allows for abduction of the shoulder. And you can now include lots of different joints actions in your planning to make sure you've covered all areas of the body that you really need to. This is gonna be golden, it's gonna really help your understanding. So if you wanna know more about how the muscles move and you wanna know more about anatomy and physiology and how this links to your planning, then please do check out the link that is alongside this video because that is where you're gonna find out more information on these actions and also have three mock questions to test your knowledge. And alongside that, there'll be our revision bootcamp bundle, which will allow you to understand much more about the anatomy and physiology for your exam, but also for when you're planning and working with clients. Thank you so much for joining me. I would love it if you would drop a little comment below and let me know what your big takeaway has been. And I will see you on the next video. Take care.